Hello, magnificent beings. Eva Gregory here, founder of the Successful Spiritual Entrepreneur Group right here and founder of the Enlightened Business Success Academy, where we help established coaches, healers, holistic practitioners, spiritual entrepreneurs attract high-end clients with premium offers. And I just want to say that I started the this training and realized I was in the wrong group. So if you would like wondering where I am, here am I. If you're here with us live, make sure you say hello in the comments below if you haven't given up on me already. And if you happen to be catching this on the replay, just put hashtag replay in the comments because I'm always coming back and I'm always checking on the comments and making sure that I respond to all of you personally. All right. So here I am a little bit late, but I'm here. Okay. Okay. I'm excited because we're going to be talking about something near and dear to my heart. And that is how do you design your premium programs and offers to attract high end clients? And if you are with us, whether you're catch catching this live or on the replay, you want to make sure that you've got uh, a pen and paper or you've got your keyboard so that you can take lots of notes because I've got a lot to give you today. All right. And if you have questions, feel free. <laughs> to uh, ask me questions in the comments. I know, what can I say? I'm sitting there walking up that boy, this is interesting. Usually I have someone saying hello. And then I, I kind of looked up, I bought StreamYard obviously, and I saw this little icon and went, that's not my group I'm supposed to be in. So there you go. Thank you for hanging in and thank you for being here. I appreciate that. All right, get your note taken ready. All right, we're gonna look at it. How do you design a premium offer? How do you design that program? that is going to attract your high-end clients? How do you make it valuable? Because you want to give so much value, right? And if you're wondering, how do I charge those premium offers or, or premium offers? How do I charge those higher fees for my offers? I, well, I hope that at the end of this, you're going to understand exactly why you need to charge more than you probably have been up to now. So that you're confident about charging 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, even more for your programs or offers, depending on what it is you're offering. All right. So I want to show you how to design a premium program so you feel really good about charging those higher fees. Now, the first thing when you're looking at designing your offer is you've got to be very intentional about what you choose to put in it. All right. And what that means is that it's just as important what you do include as what you don't include in your program. And I definitely want to talk about what not to include in your offer because the mistake I see so many coaches and spiritual entre entrepreneurs make is trying to include as much as possible in their offers. But you want to be really intentional about what you include and what you don't so that the value that you offer doesn't get watered down and it doesn't get cheapened because it's stuffed with all this non-essential stuff that isn't relevant necessarily to the program, right? You want to make sure that what's included actually gets your client's results because that's the main thing we care about. It's definitely the main thing they care about. So what does it look like? And if you have a premium program or offer, I'd love to know what is your offer? Let me know in the comments below. And maybe what you've got is perfect the way it is. It might you want to be tweaking it a little bit after today's training. So premium programs and services are a combination of pre-recorded content and live calls. All right. So we combine the course content that's pre-recorded. So that's modules, videos, trainings, templates, scripts, resources, checklists, all those things that folks can download from a private member's portal. And then you combine that with the live group coaching elements, feedback, critiques, Q and A, along with a number of other elements of support. So these are, think about this for your offers that you're doing right now. What can be pre-recorded? What are the support systems and resources around that? And then where is it that you can provide the live coaching and feedback. All right. Now, the premium offer program delivery model means you are no longer teaching content live. All right. I know a lot of people 
are teaching the content live every time they bring in new groups of folks to their program. This is not about spending hours teaching live and then repeating yourself over and over and over again. You don't want to have to repeat yourself and teach live all the time. OK, so you want to really laser focus those live hours that you do have to contribute to your program. Ideally, you can do this on five hours or less a week in the delivery of this within your program. Um, yay, you made it. Awesome. <laughs> you made it and I made it too. Anyway, great to have you. <laughs> All right, live hours. Live hours, are re remember, is focused on high impact coaching, mentoring, critiques, feedback, and Q&A for your clients. You want to focus those live hours on high impact feedback for them. I'm going to show you how to do that so you're not spending hours and hours in delivery. And this is actually scalable. So you just start giving high impact coaching and feedback. But what you're not doing is you're not repeating yourself in the content over and over again. That gets recorded and put up in a member's platform. So your your clients and your members can get access there. That's why we want to combine course content with live coaching and Q&A. So you've got pre-recorded elements and then you've got the live elements. It's the best of both worlds where people have content they can go and refer back to and they can get that live coaching and feedback for extra support. This is what makes up a premium offer and this can be at a premium price point, which means your premium offers could range anywhere from 3,000 to 35,000 and up. This is your signature program. The premium offer, your premium program is your signature program. It has a specific container. It has a limited time frame that it runs. This is going to be your what you're known for, all right? This is your premium offer. And it's what you always lead with because it gets the best results and it offers the best experience. So there's a huge mindset mindset shift here. Million dollar mindset shift. With premium offers, you are selling the results of your program and your signature system. OK, so that could be your methodology. It could be your framework. But what you are not selling is additional time and access to you. All right. For me, I spend about about three to four hours a week delivering my premium offer. And even that, that's only the first three weeks of every month that I'm doing that. OK, so the first three weeks of every month, I'm spending three, sometimes four hours delivering my premium offer. So I'm not selling additional time and access to me. Now, you might be thinking, which a lot of people do, is if you're charging a premium, you should be including a lot more one-on-one -on -one time with you personally. This is a big mistake that coaches and spiritual entrepreneurs make versus what you want to be thinking, the million dollar mindset, which is the clients are investing in the result that they desire and the system that's going to help them get there. That's your signature offer. What has you stand apart from everyone else? The system, the methodology, the framework, the content that you created, that provides the results that people are investing to get. It's the results, the ultimate transformation, and your methodology for getting them there. But what they're not investing in is additional time with you personally. Okay? So you got to completely separate out the increased value that they get from it being more and more personal time with you and personal effort and energy from you. You cannot link these two things or you're never going to be able to scale your business and you will not be a happy camper. You will be stretched way too thin. All right. So your premium offer is more than just your program content. It's an entire experience. It's the way that people feel when they work with you. It's how they feel taken care of. It's how supporting or supported they feel. 
And so look at what is it your offer providing that gives them what they want in the pre-recorded content. So you give them all the value you normally would have maybe been delivering live. Now that's not long, no longer live so that you can just show up and give them real time support and coaching and feedback after they've gone through or as they're going through the content in your members portal. All right. Any questions about this? Let me know. Any ahas or nuggets too? I want to know what insights or what, oh my God, ahas you get as we go through this. Okay, next, you want your premium offer to be irresistible. Now, that means your one sentence hook or your description of your offer has to have people saying, oh my gosh, I want that. Where do I sign up? That sounds awesome. I'm so in, right? So you want it to be irresistible. And then you also want it to be scalable. You want your program to run like a well-oiled machine. And it needs to be scalable with everyone receiving the same level of care and results and support that they would receive, whether you had 10 people in your program or 100 people in your program. Evergreen is great. Evergreen is fabulous. You can still have a, in fact, I teach evergreen. That's one of the models that I teach is how do you have an evergreen program? The Enlightened Business Success Academy is an evergreen program. You can join the Enlightened Business Success Academy at any time. Now, when I'm doing, maybe I'm doing a challenge or a launch or something special, then there might be additional bonuses that you get if you sign up during that time. And I also teach having those promotional uh, offers that you do where you give value, 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 and then you open up uh, the ability for people to sign up with you right now for something special. Sometimes I'll tell you this, especially as many of you may be starting to look at what you're doing as premium offers. As a premium offer, you might not feel comfortable jumping from, I'm just going to make this up. Let's say you're offering something for $500 and now you're learning how to create this so that there's so much more value provided that you could be charging $5,000. You're not comfortable with that. I would have the big promotion and I would uh, open it up and let people come in and let them know that on a certain midnight at a certain date, that price is going up. So that would be another thing that you can do. They can still come in the day after the promotion's over. It just will be at the higher price. I hope this is making sense. Let me see. Yes, absolutely. It is so true. All of us, our time is our most valuable asset. Uh, and it's about the results and the feeling your clients experience. That's what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So for you to be thinking about what that might be, but I absolutely evergreen 100% of the way. We'll, we'll be talking about that in some other trainings as well. Now, the other thing is your premium offer should be transformational. This is what we were talking about. Who will your clients become through your program, through those results that they get? Who do they become as human beings? How will their beliefs shift about who they are? Uh, how will they have massive mindset shifts over the course of working through your program in other ways? How does it shift not just what they did, but who they become? Okay. Transformational beyond the results. It's who your people are becoming. They're stepping into a higher level version of themselves. Okay. And the other thing, when you're thinking about creating your premium offers, your premium program, you want it to be easily worth two times to 10 times the investment of your program. Now, a lot of times I get this pushback, but my program doesn't have anything related to making money. It doesn't have to. Your ROI does not have to be money, sales, revenue. Doesn't matter. The value should be clear and obvious because of its positioning. So this is what I tell people. You can either teach someone to build a six-figure business or, for example, you can solve six-figure problems, right? 
So what giant problems are you solving for people? And that's what you're doing in your program. It could be health related. Think about how much money people spend on health and wellness. Worse yet, how much they spend after they don't have their health and wellness anymore. Think about how much money people spend on personal development. I spent tens of thousands of dollars on my personal development and my spiritual development. High end clients will also. So think about how much money people would spend on their relationships and themselves. So if someone invests, and I'd love to know, what is it that you do? What is the problem you solve or what is the result that you get your clients? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to see that. But think about how much money people would spend. Let's say they invest $5,000 with you. It doesn't mean you got to teach them how to make $10,000. What we're talking about here is actual transformations, right? Whether it's health and wellness, whether it's issues that become a six figure problem, whether it's relationship issues that can become six figure problems if they don't solve them, it, their, their, their sanity. Right. And in most cases, these folks that you can help who have these issues will tell you if you can help them resolve this issue, the value is priceless. You understand? This does not have to be directly related to making money. You are all changing lives with your work. And this is about the value that you're providing beyond the money. And so it doesn't mean you just have to be teaching business or something money related. Lots of things would be worth two times to 10 times their investment. You can give people back their time. You can give people back their energy. You can give people back their peace of mind. Do you know what that's worth to people who don't have it? Their confidence, their health, their relationships. It's how people feel now. The next thing is that your program needs to be curated. What that means is you need to protect your community and you need to preserve the integrity of the container that you've created by carefully selecting who joins your program. And you do this by you have your divine ideal client and that you're clear. This is who I work with. You make clear that you work with clients you love. I love my clients. There is no way I'd be able to do this if I didn't feel that way about them. My job wouldn't be fulfilling otherwise either. So the first thing you need to do really is you've got to get clear who is your divine ideal client. And if someone's not your divine ideal client, don't let people in who are not a good fit. This is something I see so many coaches and spiritual entrepreneurs do. They said, yes, they wanted to work with me. So I take them in and then find out they're the client from hell. Or maybe they're not the client from hell, but they're just not a fit. Or they're the one that's the most needy. It needs so much more from you. And boy, I'll tell you, nothing will help you get clear on who your divine client is, is to be working with a few of those. <laughs> there will be a lot of clarity fast. All right. So make sure you're very clear. Who is it this program's designed for? One of the things I'm very clear on anything that I offer, you will see on the page, it'll say, this is for you if, bullet, bullet, bullet. This is not for you if, bullet, bullet, bullet. So it's very clear who, who my programs are for, all right? Um, you're not accepting applications from people who you know are not a good fit for you or your program. It could be one or the other or both. You have to know who your divine client is so that you preserve your integrity and the integrity of your programs by sticking to that. All right. This is something a lot of people don't really pay attention to. And I know it's very, oh, it's very scary to say no to someone who's not a fit when you're wanting to make money. When you start making premium offers at these higher prices, you start to attract a different caliber of person. And then it makes it a little easier for you to say, I'm sorry, this just wouldn't be quite the fit for you. Okay. If you can't help that person, 
You're not going to let them invest in your program just because they can afford it. Just because somebody can afford your program does not make them your divine client, right? I help women over 50 learn to set healthy boundaries with love, compassion, so they have more time and energy for their own dreams and desires. Yes, you do. And what a great niche. And man, how many are wanting that? Perfect example of it not needing to be something that you offer around making money. The people, the women that feel this way to have this resolved, priceless, priceless. The pain of not having this resolved is what creates the value that you have to offer. And they want that. It's the same for all of you who make offers that are not about business or making money. Now, your premium offer needs to be unique. That is, it's clearly distinct from any other offers that you have. You can have, by the way, all kinds of offers. You can have your premium offer. You can have lower end offers. I don't, uh, I'm not saying you shouldn't have lower end offers. I do too. I haven't offered them very often. I'm about to offer a couple. Stay tuned for that in the next couple of weeks or so. But you start at the top. You always start by positioning who you are, who you help and how from the perspective of your premium offer first. OK, but when you have those offers, you want to make sure that they are very distinct from what you offer in your other offers. So there's no confusion in your offer suite. All right. What makes your premium offer truly different, both different from other people's offers who might be doing something similar to you, but different in the marketplace. And what makes it different from anything you've done before or, or in any of the other offers that you currently sell? What is that difference? So that's another checkpoint. You want to write that down, make sure that that's very clear. And then here's a great one. And I, I learned this from, oh my gosh, who did I learn? Oh, oh, um, Mariah Cause. She taught me this. What type of testimonials do you want to elicit from your clients? What kind of testimonial do you want to receive? OK, when you get clear on the types of testimonials you want to get now, you can work backwards to figure out what your program needs to include in order to get that type of testimonial. Is that not cool or what? And then you base everything on the type of testimonials that you want to become known for. So let me know in the chat, what testimonials do you want clients to be giving you? Not just at the end of the time of the program, but during their time in the program. What testimonials do you want on your website? Maybe they would talk about how their entire relationship with mindset has changed their lives, or they would talk about how their business completely changed. Or that maybe they're talking about how they have a deeper connection to their own source energy. They would talk about how much you care about them. What would you want them telling your friends about you and your program? Think about these. How do you want them to feel? And the amazing transformation that they experience. So you can start there by looking at what are the types of testimonials that you want, and then you move backwards. Okay. That's going to help inform what you're going to put in your program and what you need to cover. Okay. So let me get some water here. And then we're going to talk about premium offer mistakes. In the meantime, let me know what, what kind of testimonials you want to hear. It's a great way to decide what's in the program. And what's so awesome is I can look at my testimonials and I'll say, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that's what I want. Because those testimonials said, I did what they wanted. I gave them what they wanted and what they needed. Oh, I love, I love Mark Porteous. Help me to clarify who I am, why I'm here, and how to connect with my soul tribe so I can thrive in my purpose, future client. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, let's talk about premium offer mistakes. Because I want to talk about the most common mistakes that coaches and spiritual entrepreneurs are very tempted to make when they're designing their premium offers because it comes from a lack of confidence, right? 
there are the issues that every single person comes up against when they're designing their offers. And the core of the biggest mistakes I see are based on people trying to overcompensate for a lack of confidence. And so that's when they try to pack as much in as possible into the program. That is just a lack of confidence. It's interesting, huh? You might not have ever connected the two, but it, when I see programs where this offers us all of this stuff, my eyes, are, in fact, when you do that, most people are going to just walk away, especially high end clients and like, oh my gosh, I don't have time for all that. All right. It comes from a lack of confidence in yourself or in your skills, or it's feeling like you need to give everything to your clients to make it worth it. That's not what makes it worth it. Okay. So mistake number one is unfortunately uh, a lot of people mistaking the difference between enabling versus empowering. Okay. So we're, we're wanting to empower in what we're offering. Um, now, this is, this is another thing that's happening here is giving everything because we're wanting to make sure that they get all the help they can. And there's a way of where you're almost wanting to do, do it for them. So let's say you've got clients in your program. Well, I need to do it for them or I need to give them the answers rather than having to work to come up with the answers, that kind of thing. This is what I'm talking about here with the enabling versus empowering. You want to make sure that that's not what you do, especially when you're having a premium offer. You think I should be. You don't. A lot of people mistake enabling clients, which creates codependency. It creates toxic habits and it does not actually help your clients with empowering behaviors. Uh, these would be things like stepping in and just do it for your clients because they're struggling. Another enabling behavior is giving your clients all the answers instead of asking them to trust their own intuition, uh, trying to give them all the answers versus trying to help them pull the answers out of themselves or helping them learn how to get the answers. Once again, teaching them the fish rather than giving them the fish, right? Deciding what's aligned with their spirit and values. Another enabling behavior is letting your clients get stuck in their old patterns of non-commitment. This is a big one. They probably tried to get the solution before. They've never been able to get it. That's why they've hired you. So if you let them get away without doing the work or getting out of your contract or getting into their old behaviors of not taking responsibility or things like that, then you are not empowering your clients. This is where we have to be. We have to take a stand for them, even when they are, you know, they can get wobbly and with good reason we all do, but we have to be the ones to take the stand. We want to make sure that you as the coach or the mentor, as the leader are not enabling your clients, but you are empowering your clients and high end clients appreciate this. This is what creates massive value. This is what creates transformation for your clients. Your clients can't thrive or learn how to do it for themselves and be independent if you don't empower them to do that. And what we do not want to create is codependency. So if you have someone say, oh, I couldn't I couldn't work without you. I couldn't live without you. You might want to take a look at that. So. Let's see. My program is helping them feel more confident, happy and fulfilled as they watch their relationships and situations shift to support their new bold mindset. I love that. Absolutely. So let's look at what what empowering your client looks like. It looks like supporting your clients in doing it on their own, even when it's hard. You want to get you want to get in there. You just want to do it for them. You always want to help them. But you got to support them and figuring things out for themselves with your guidance, with your support, with your feedback, with your coaching. But you've got to let them do it. Another empowering behavior is reminding them that when it comes to decisions, they've got all the answers within them. You're there to help guide them to pull it out. Right. Now, there's a difference in what I'm talking about here 
And when you're teaching your methodology, they don't know your methodology. You got to teach that, but then you've got to train them. And how do you, how do they apply it? Make sense? They know their answers. We need to help them find those. Another empowering way to be a coach would holding them to their commitments and their vision that they committed to. They told you this is why they joined your program. And so one of the things I will say right up front with folks who join my program, first of all, we're in the, this is something also to remember when people, the, the emotions are high when they first join your program, it's like you're in the honeymoon stage. Oh, they're here and you're going to be working with them and they're going to do their stuff. I have to remind them, this is not necessarily all going to be easy. You're going to find times when it's going to feel hard to you or you're going to get want to give up. You're going to want to quit. You're going to want to stop showing up for yourselves. You're going to want to stop coming to the calls. And I'm here to remind you those times will come. And I'm telling you now before they come. So when they do come and I remind you, it'll stick. And now I can support you in moving out of that. But there's no um, stars in the eyes kind of illusion about what it might take to create transformation. Transformation if transformation was easy, we'd all be transformed. <laughs> ah, but we all have, we're always peeling back that next onion la layer, right? So this is something for you to be very, could, could, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Aware of for yourselves and for your clients and letting them know ahead of time too. I'm here to support you. There are going to be times when your stuff is just going to get in the way. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here to remind you of that and call you out. Right. And so you're going to create all kinds of ways to support them uh, as a result of knowing this. OK, so even when they want to give up, even when they want to stop showing up for themselves, even when they want to stop calling, coming to the calls, you are there for them. Who here has had that happen? Let me know in the comments. It happens. It happens. But it's more empowering to hold someone to their commitments and not let them stay stuck in their old patterns. They didn't need to hire you to go stay stuck in their old patterns. They could have done that for free. We're here to get them out of those patterns. And sometimes it's, it's a little challenging and they need to understand that. But they also need to understand that's why they signed up for this program with you so that you could help them through that. They're not having to do this alone. All right. Next mistake. It's structuring the elements of your program so that you can't scale it later. So this is what I tell my clients. Uh, it's the thing that you're trying to include in your program when you only have 10 or 20 clients. Is that thing still viable if you had 200 clients? If it's not viable to to do something with 200 clients only if it was as 20. In other words, if there's a cutoff period where I can only do I can only provide this level of one on one with so many clients that needs to come out of your premium offer. That can be something separate. That can be an upsell to a different level of working with you, but not part of the premium program. OK, if, if you can't do it with 20 clients as well as 200 clients, it's not scalable. You don't want to include that in your premium offer. All right. So let's say you're going to have weekly one on ones with your clients. That won't work with 200 clients. You're not going to work one on one with 200 clients. So you don't want to do it for the first 20 clients. You're not going to add anything to your premium offer that you can't work at just about any number. Now, in the group programs, you've got 200 clients, you've got 2000 clients. You might have extra coaches now on your team helping you with this, but it's still scalable. Does this make sense? I mean, this is what happens all the time. Anything that would cause you to have to cap the number of clients you can bring into your program each month, then you've just capped your business. And I have, have had clients come to me saying, I can only enroll 10 people a month, or I can only have this many people in my program. That tells me that there is a problem. It's fixable, but there's a problem. We've got to make it scalable. It's a lot harder too, by the way, to make these changes later than to start out creating your program with the foundation in place. The longer you wait to make these kinds of changes, 
the harder it gets to change the delivery of your program. And as you attract more and more people to your program, then scaling becomes more challenging. So think long term and think, how can you make it scalable from day one? If you're designing a brand new premium offer, perfect. You're going to do it right, right out of the bat. If you already have an offer, we can help you redesign or tweak that. But you definitely want to go look at it now before it gets even bigger. So just checking over here. So let me know, you guys, how is this landing for you? Yes, no, maybe so. Insights, thinking it doesn't apply to you. I know that one's a big one for a lot of people. Yeah, but that doesn't apply to what I do, Eva. Uh, we've had people in the Enlightened Business Success Academy where we've actually looked at it and found, yeah, it did apply to them. Sometimes you got to think outside the box, though, right? Um, great. I'm so happy that this is valuable. All right. The next mistake, this is going to be an interesting one, Tana, is not having clear boundaries. This is what Tana does so well with her women that she works with. People get stuck in thinking that what is actually codependency is support. And it's disempowering your clients when you do that. It actually hurts you and your clients when you don't have clear boundaries, which means that you are... The minute that they reach out to you, you have to reach back or they go, oh, my gosh, I, I reached out to you an hour ago. How come I didn't hear? That means you've got some boundary issues. OK, it hurts you. It hurts the clients. You do not want to be responding to people at midnight or Sundays or doing something for them rather than just supporting them to do it for themselves. These are disempowering, toxic behaviors that do not serve or empower your clients. Coddling is not the same as support. We want to have boundaries. We love boundaries. And we want to have just really clear and amazing boundaries so you can actually have a life. One that's outside of your business, outside of your programs and your clients. We're building our businesses to support our lifestyles and not the other way around. And that can be done and it can be done very well and support your clients very well without it being, uh, being beyond the boundaries that you choose to set. Your clients are capable, responsible adults. We do not need to coddle them. We need to support them. We need to help them when they're feeling down. We need them to know they're not alone. That's different from coddling them. Because when you do that, it actually hurts them. Just a perfect example. I'm very clear. I only do my calls. This is interesting. I'm doing this on a Friday. But I only do my calls on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, usually the first three weeks of every month. The reason I'm doing it today is because I had some schedule conflicts because of some other things that were going on. And I did not want to not have this training this week. This was more important to me than not having it at all. So there will be exceptions to the rule. There always are. But for me, I'm clear. I, my calls are on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, the first three weeks of every month. That's it. And you can set whatever parameters you prefer for your business. The other thing I see missing is not providing self-accountability for your clients. So things to be looking at are weekly check-in forms would be a great way for self-accountability. But you can provide the check-in forms. You can send the reminders the day before. You can send reminders the day of whatever it is. You could set all of this up, by the way, on automation. But in the end, guess who's accountable for filling out that form? Your clients. You can't do this for them. There's only so much we can do, but we can provide all the possible ways of supporting them so that they don't slip through the cracks. But we, there's only so much we can do. Uh, so you're here to support them. You're here to empower them. But at the end of the day, your divine clients should be responsible and self-accountable. And if something isn't getting done, usually it, it's because they didn't under the step, they didn't understand the steps that they should be taking. And if that's the case, this is good feedback for you. So you want to make sure that the steps in your program are clear. So they understand here's step one to take. Here's the next step on day three. You need to do this. Do they have that level of understanding 
of step by step what they should be doing. So if I see that something there's confusion around something, I know that's something for me to go fix. And then I take responsibility and I'm self accountable for going back and making that a lot more clear. OK, got this. Awesome. You're quite welcome. The other way you create accountability in your programs is you have a limited time frame and a big, meaningful investment. So having that significant investment and a limited time frame that they can get access to the program and to your coaching and support creates a huge incentive for someone to really take it seriously, A, and take themselves seriously, B and get their rearing gear. And bottom line, it needs to be an inside job and your ideal clients get that. Divine clients get that. If that's not a characteristic you have on your list of divine client attributes, add it. <laughs> okay. So just be clear about who your divine ideal client is, who their what their characteristics and attributes are that makes them divine for you. They need to have some sort of internal motivation or some internal reason for doing things. And they need to be able to connect to that as their coach or their mentor. You can help them with that. You can help them connect to their big why you can remind them of that. But ultimately, it's up to them. And of course, what we had alluded to earlier is the big mistake is we want to overcompensate in the program from our own lack of confidence. That's what I was touching on earlier. So when you've got a lack of confidence in your skills or yourself or your program, that's when you start to add things into the program that don't need to be there. Your premium offer and the outcome you help people achieve should be irresistible without all the extraneous bells and whistles. We don't need, but wait, there's more. It's a Ginzu knife. It slices, it dices. We don't need any of that. That dilutes the program. It cheapens the program. Okay. We, you don't even need a lot of ton of bonuses. The thing with bonuses, if you have bonuses, make sure they are super synergetic, synergistic to how it supports your program not a bonus just for the sake of having a bonus. Make sense? Okay. We don't need tons of stuff. We don't need other things to sell your offer. You want an outcome that should be good enough. And so this can show up as wanting to include weekly one-on-one -on -one calls with everybody or throwing in, well, I have this other program and this other product. I'll throw those in for free. Don't do it. This, this, defeats the whole purpose of what a premium offer and a premium program is. It will cheapen it and you don't want it to seem that way. It, it's a, a, a huge disconnect to high end clients. The message that you're conveying is, hey, if you invest in my premium program, because it's such a big investment, I'm going to toss in all this other stuff that I would normally charge you for. So feel like you're getting a lot better value. It's almost like, hey, I don't really think the program is worth the investment if I don't add these other things. Got it? So watch, watch, be aware of what's going through your mind when you're creating your offer. OK, so can you see how the energy of this is basically that you don't really have confidence in either the amount you're charging for what you're offering? You don't have a lot of confidence in the value that you're offering in the program. And so, you know, people will just toss in all these bonuses and free gifts that people don't need, has nothing to do with supporting what they receive in the program. So if you've got a program where you're doing that right now, go back and look at it. Go back and look at it and see uh, what you might want to change there. You want to make sure the value in your premium offer itself standalone is two to ten times the investment on its own without any of the bonuses and free gifts thrown in. Now you can still have bonuses. Like I said, they need just to be very synergistic one or two, maybe, but is the value of your program? Will it stand alone? 
so important. So when you're designing your offer or you're re redesigning a current offer, this is something that we focus on in the EBSA, the Enlightened Business Success Academy. You want to make sure you're not just adding a bunch of things in because you don't know what else to do. You want to be very strategic about what goes into your program. All right. Another big mistake we see is having a confusing product or program suite. So again, your product suite, your program suite, those are all the different offers that you may have from low to mid to high. We want to make sure that your premium offer does not overlap with other offers. It should not have any overlap. Overlap creates confusion. It creates decision fatigue and people will just not know what to do. So you want to make sure that it's crystal clear how your offers are different. And if you've got a combination of lower and higher ticket offers, what is that difference? You've got to be able to be able to explain the difference. So it's crystal clear. When should I join this offer versus that one? Can you define that? It's got to be very obvious to your potential clients. So here's what I would recommend you do. Another to do for you here. Write this down. You want to create a comparison chart of all of your offers. Now, this is for internal use only. This is not something you're going to share publicly. Let me get some water here. This whole comparison chart is basically it's to help you understand what's confusing about your product offer. So if you've got a comparison chart and you have two or three offers and you list them out, Include check boxes for everything. And if you find it's difficult to create a comparison chart because there's so much alike, that's an indicator that your offers are not clear and they're all over the place and it's fixable, right? But we've got to start by being clear. Another mistake. Oh my goodness. Very common mistake. I call it pricing by proxy. Uh, and this is where people are when you're thinking about what is it that I should price my premium offer at, then it's, it's like people are pricing by committee. So that's when you're asking yourself, huh, I wonder what people will pay, not what it's worth. You're saying, what will you, do you believe people would pay? And then you decide on a price based on what you wrongly assume other people are going to pay for it. This shows up as undercharging. This is what happens when folks are undercharging because they don't believe someone will pay something beyond that. If that's the case, those are not your divine market or you don't believe that you're providing the value in your offer. And we need to look at that. You, there's so much value, guys. Most people don't even get the caliber of what they're offering. You guys are changing lives and and you really want to understand the value so you can stand loud and proud and strongly in that value, knowing that even at a premium price, that price is two times or 10 times the value in the program is two times or 10 times that investment. It's easy to get you to that when you start to understand the value of what you offer. But this is what happens. Pricing by proxy, pricing by committee. What do I believe people would be willing to pay? This is when people undercharge for their offers. And now what happens is they're charging course prices or product prices for this high level training and support in their premium programs. And I can't tell you how many times I see people charging $500 or even $1,000 for a course. And they're including weekly coaching calls and Q&A sessions and live streams and personal one-on-one -on -one time. And oh my goodness, and they're charging course prices for premium products or premium programs, which is insane. And then they wonder why they're still struggling. They are working like crazy. They're working flat out and they're not making the amount of money they need to be making to create a sustainable business. And this happens when you're basing your pricing on what you think other people will pay or what you wrongly assume other people can afford. This is not how you run a business. It's definitely not how you'll stay in business. OK, so stop projecting your limiting beliefs on others. That's very disempowering to make assumptions like that about people. It's like stop projecting your limiting beliefs and 
stay out of their wallets and their bank accounts and let them make those decisions for themselves. All right. And when you position your premium offer and you have a, a, an investment that says, wow, this is a valuable offer. Divine high end clients will see that divine high end clients could still get the amazing shift and transformation from you. But if you're offering it at 500, they're going, oh, I need I need something a little more sustain, su substantial than that. They don't even see it. It's like you have your you, you've got a Rolls Royce and you're offering at a Volkswagen price. People cannot see the value in what you have to offer and they don't see you as someone who offers high value, even though you do. OK, so I hope this is hope this is sinking in. So you want to price for yourself, your business and the value that you provide. Three things you want to include in your premium offer and you want to write these down. This is what's going to add value to your offers. It's going to help your clients get results, which is what we care about. And everything we do is designed to get our clients results. That's the ultimate reason for all of these things. OK, number one, set a time frame. Your premium offer needs to have an intentional limited time frame, whether that's three months, six months or 12 months, whatever is the best time frame for your program based on what you do and the results you get clients and the time for them to achieve those results. OK, we have some clients with 10 week programs and four month programs, but the time frame needs to be longer. Why? Because they need to integrate what they're learning. You can you can give them a five module program and be done in five weeks but to actually do those five modules to implement those five modules to get the integration and the transformation they need five months not five weeks so look at what you're doing it's, it's like you uh someone said it's like you're taking your client and you're out in the rowboat and you're rowing out to the middle of the lake you go oh well five weeks is up you dump them out in the lake leave them to fend for themselves and then you keep going don't want to do that you do not want to do that to your clients. And so you want to look at what is it that you really need? How long should your program be for them to actually get the time to get the results while they're getting support from you doing that and the transformation? So I could say go back, working backwards from the testimonials that you want to receive from your clients. How long does your program need to be for somebody to get that glowing testimonial by the end of the program? Better yet, during the program. How long do you think they need in your program on average? So once they've completed this time frame, then they're out of the program. They don't get access any, to anything in the program. So it's really important for you, uh, for them to get results. OK, let me know how this is landing for any of you. Yes, no, maybe so. Got it. Not for me. I can do it, but you can do it, but I can't. Let me know what you're talking about down there. Let me know what you're thinking. All right. Another thing to include in the program are milestones to inspire progress and create that momentum and that accountability. Milestones are rewards for taking action, regardless, by the way, of the outcome. The milestone might be they just did their first live challenge, five day challenge. They've never done one before. Whether there was a lot great results or not, that's a milestone. We have in the Enlightened Business Success Academy what I call pop the champagne. And what we do is anytime someone has some kind of win, whether it's they've done their first challenge, they've done their first podcast, they've gotten on their first summit, they've got a new client, they whatever it is. And we pop the champagne. We celebrate the heck out of them for that. So you're not measuring someone's results in this case. In other words, you don't need to measure how much money they made or, or how much something changed for the milestones. But you do want to reward them for taking the action. This is taking courage. You want to reward them for that. And your program might have two to three big milestones. Uh, and so be thinking about those milestones and how you would want to acknowledge them for that. OK, so the reward is something that you only give someone when they do something either for the first time or is doing something brave or scary for them to do. And, and it also can be, hey, I got another client. We have lots of pop the champagne for new clients. Got a new client, got a new client. So an example would be in our case, if they got their first high-end client or they launched their premium offer or they did their first five-day challenge or they launched an evergreen enrollment funnel. But basically these are big milestones for the program for them achieving that result. So 
it doesn't matter how their launch did so much as the fact that they did the launch, because once they've done the launch, of course, that's is all it creates that momentum. They'll start getting results, but we got to get that first time, right? The first time out that we've ever done anything. So it doesn't just make sure you're separating the two from the acknowledgements for your people. Uh, they could have just done their first live stream, right? So it's just getting them to make progress through the areas that you might find they might feel challenging to them so that they're feeling supported as they're stepping out. And this is really effective also to keep people getting to the finish line of your program without all the extra Ginsu knives and bells and whistles, right? So it's just this natural momentum for them to get to the finish line and get over those challenging pieces. And then the third element of a premium offer is feedback and reviews of your client's work, mentoring, coaching. This is how you provide incredible value and will create amazing results for your clients at scale. So your clients are doing the work. They're creating all the work for themselves. But you or your team, if you have a team, but probably right now it would be you, you are the one that reviews it. You're providing the feedback so that your clients are empowered to continue to learn how to do things for themselves. We cannot do it for them as much as we want to. We can't want something for them more than they want it for themselves as much as we want to. And so we have to be empowering them. All right. And they also want to know that at the end, they're going to get some kind of stamp of approval. You're going to give them a green light. You're going to give them the thumbs up. This looks good. I've looked at your stuff. It's all set. You're going to coach them. You're going to, they're going to come and say, I'm having a belt down this week and you're going to be there to support them. And so we do all of this in the EBSA. We review, we'll review anything that they're working on, whether it's sales pages or webinar slides, email copy, headlines, social media posts, giving them actual feedback, but also letting them know, hey, this was great. Or have you thought about doing this? So your clients are the ones doing the work, though. You're not doing it. And you or your coaches and team are giving them that personalized support and feedback, letting them know uh, it's good and ready to go. It's also doing this in group. That's why you have all of the trainings pre-recorded and you show up once or twice a week. There are different models and how people lay out their premium offers as a group to support them in that way. Okay. So some of the things you want to eliminate from your premium offers. The first is private one-on-one -on -one sessions with you, weekly one-on-one -on -one sessions with you. You can support them in the group coaching calls. Nobody is buying extra time. They're buying the outcome and the results of your system. Okay. In the EBSA, we got three group mentoring calls every week. I mean, sorry, every month. And we have uh, three mindset calls every month. And then they also get short laser sessions once a month. Because if you're giving them all this other support, you've got your group calls that you're doing maybe four to five, five hours a week in a group setting, you're responding them to them in the Facebook group. That once a month, one-on-one -on -one laser session is enough. Okay. So be thinking about what does your program look like? Uh, here's another one you want to make sure that you're not doing, and that's having them have unlimited text messaging and phone access to you as part of the program. If you want to scale your program and have a life and not having people messaging you all hours of the day, who are paying clients, you want to provide other avenues of support for them so that they are not required to be at your, or you're not required to be at their beck and call 24 seven. You don't need to provide this. There's so many other ways that you can support your clients without enabling them into this codependency. And usually if someone feels like they have to have you, there's a codependency going on. And when you design your program this way, you can spend less than five hours a week in delivery, really. And then you show up powerfully for your clients. You're not tired. You're not exhausted. You're not resenting it. You're looking forward to it. It ignites you. It fulfills you. And you're able to show up fully during those group calls or those one or two times a week you hold them. And, and you have incredible boundaries. So I'd love to hear from you. What are your biggest ahas, insights, 
any golden nuggets you've gotten so far from this? I'd really love to know in the chat. Let me know. I'm going to get some water. And now let's talk about evergreen. I don't know who was it was asking about the evergreen earlier. This is one of the things I do encourage you to do is design your offer so that it is designed so that you can enroll clients anytime on evergreen. Evergreen just means that people can enroll and start in your program anytime year round. They don't have to wait. Let's say if you did a cohort that's three months and so they start in January and then people can't get in after that until January, February, March, April, right? For the next one. Uh, you don't have to do that. People can come in at any time and they can get started at the program at any, any time. And here's why this is so important. People want the solution to their problem now when they're 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 not wanting to wait. They find you. They find your program. They realize, oh, my God, this is it. I want that. And you did such a good job of promoting it and you're positioned it really well and your divine clients really get this is for them. It's resonating. They, they you like your name is all over them. They've got, they've got, you know, they're ready to enroll. They're excited to get started. Nobody wants to be told. Great. The next program is going to start in two months. I'll put you on the waiting list. Very deflating for somebody who's really ready to go right now. So don't you want to help them as soon as they want help? Um, don't you want help as soon as you want help? Turn it around and put yourself in their shoes, right? And especially when you know you've got the perfect solution for them and yet you're not able to give them access to it for a couple of months until you're ready to start your next program. If you help your clients with something that's really life-changing, which you do, then that is very disheartening for them. So you don't want to do that. And your business will suffer because that person, if they are really gung ho and solution, looking for that solution to their issue right now, they are going to find someone else that will help them right now. OK, so if your program isn't designed to be evergreen, people can't enroll in your program every day when they're ready. If you don't have the systems in place and it's not designed that way, people will just go find another person that they that can help them or another program they can join because no one wants to wait around for even weeks, much less months when they're ready to go. They've finally made the decision to get the help they want. So does this make sense? Oh, my. Oh, thank you. Loving. I love your brilliant strategy balance with heart and soul. Love the idea of structuring programs to provide value to more clients with less. Yes. Yes. And it's so doable. It's so doable. So if your programs are designed with a specific start date and those are the only times somebody can join, then you're going to be losing out on a lot of a lot of clients who just really would like to work with you, but they don't want to wait. And even if you've had set start dates for your offers, thinking everybody has to start at the same time and they have to move at the same pace. Haven't you noticed within a week or two, people are all already over the place. Some people haven't gone through the training. Some have done work. Some haven't done the work. They're all moving at their own pace anyway. OK, some people are on module six. Others are still on module two or they're just not implementing at the speed that you're teaching or that you're releasing the trainings. Everybody has their own speed as well. They've got other things going on in their lives. This is actually normal behavior for human beings. This is how the real world works. This is how life works. People do things at different paces. People move at different speeds. So instead of fighting that and not accommodating that, we just embrace it. We just embrace what's happening naturally anyway. And so we build our programs to support how real people behave and how they need to move through the world from the beginning. And we recognize that and we design for it. That's why cookie cutter doesn't work. We are all unique facets of the human dynasty, the human diamond. We are facets of the diamond of humanity. And so we want to cater to our clients in the way that works best for them. And this is how you can do that. 
The other reason you need to have your programs designed to be evergreen is it actually helps your clients get better results. And here's why. Having new clients join your program every single day or every single week when it's on evergreen or maybe it's once a month or whenever they come in, but new people are coming in and they're starting every time, you know, when new people come in, it just kind of creates a little bit of new energy. It creates some more momentum. There's motivation and energy in the community. And if you want to have an active, lively, dynamic group where people are engaging in your community, then you want to have fresh people coming in. When you're introducing new people into the program, it also is reinforcing the value of the program. And it also gives those who might have felt like they're stuck or they're in a rut right now, they've gotten off track. It kind of re-inspires them to start fresh when they're seeing new people come in. And nobody in this, in this model, nobody feels left behind. Oh, we're all supposed to be on module four and I'm still back on module two. What's wrong with me? None of that. Nobody is behind because everybody's moving at their own pace. And some people are just getting started brand new. So from a business pr perspective, there's no more relying on the start and stop months. You, you needed 10 people in the program. You only signed up two, but now you're going to be with those two until you start the program again. That all goes away. That whole feast or famine roller coaster can go away. And if you've been, <coughs> excuse me, if you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. We just want to keep growing your program enrollments month after month on Evergreen. We want to keep making optimizations. You want to be improving your funnels and your program and the delivery. I mean, we're constantly doing that. That never goes away. We're constantly refining all those things, but you're doing it within an evergreen program and an enrollment system in place that supports that. And if you think, but my stuff's different, I've found in 98% of these cases, they can be designed to be evergreen, even if you don't think so. You think yours is different. We just need to get a little more creative. I've got clients in the EBSA, the Enlightened Business Success Academy right now, who said, but mine's different. They have to go together as a cohort. My people want to stay together. Well, it, they may be saying they want to stay together because that's how you, you've designed it up to now. But the minute you design your program in whatever way you design it, people go, oh, OK, so that's the design of the program and I want to join. Or you have a limiting beliefs of yourself that says it can't work the other way because, 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 you know, fill in your excuse here. I have yet, I say 98% of the cases because I'm sure there must be some cases where that's not true, but I have yet to find it. I've yet to find it. Uh, I know uh, someone was a client right now in the Enlightened Business Success Academy. She teaches on a very sensitive topic. And so she thought, oh, she's got to be careful about who comes in and they need to go through the program together. She wants them to feel safe as a result. And it turns out it was a story. It was a belief. It was an assumption that wasn't true that she couldn't go evergreen. And so you also support the evergreen model, by the way, by having a great onboarding structure to support the new clients coming in so that they settle right into the group of the program so they feel really welcome. So instead of being forced to have everyone start at the same time, you just get a, an incredible onboarding system, which is something that we teach. And then you can just bring people in at any time. Now, you might think it's going to be really strange to have people at different places of the program at once. But first of all, that's already happening. I just want to remind you of that. Look at your programs. No matter what you do, that's probably happening because people are moving at different pa paces. Even in programs where they're all being presented the same elements of the program at the same time. You go, but how can I run by coaching calls if our group calls if people are asking different questions about different topics? I do it all day, every day. Well, I do it Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, the first three weeks of every month. But I do that all the time. It's so easy. The feedback I get in the Enlightened Business Success Academy is clients who are not at the same place of others who are asking questions. That's enlightening them now. That's giving them something to think about they hadn't thought about. They're learning a lot. And if somebody new asked a question, there are others on the call who've already gone through that experience and can give them their feedback and give them what they did real time, what worked for them. So it's, it's wisdom. There's such wisdom in the group, regardless of where they are.
they don't have to all be at the same place. So if you're concerned, if it's on evergreen, you're going to have to work year round. You can get rid of that one too. Uh, if your program is well designed, then it's very low ma maintenance for you. If you're going to, let's say you want to take a month off. Great. They still can go into the training in the members platform. Maybe they won't have group calls with you, or maybe you'll have one, maybe you'll bring it down a little bit, or you'll have somebody do that for you. But let me tell you something, you can go on vacation, you can travel, they still have access to the modules. Even the onboarding can be set up in video. If you're not normally scheduled calls with new folks, calendar links will provide the times when you're back so they can just schedule when you're back, you jump right back into it. Okay. But I promise you is if, if you have an offer on evergreen, it is so much easier so much easier than relying on starts and stops, right? Launches that you're doing uh, or, or setting your programs to start certain times each year. And you can have this steady, even pace throughout the entire year where you're inviting people into your program so that you can have much more consistent income month in and month out at a steady pace. We all want that. It's really low maintenance. It's just a lot easier to keep going on evergreen. Okay. So I hope I'm enrolling you. Thank you for all the evergreen. Oh, yes. Oh my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. I hope this is making sense. Um, the next part of course, of designing your premium offer is you want them to have some quick wins. So in the offer, what are some things you can get them started with right away that will give them some quick wins that they could get done in the first 30 days or the first 60 days, but something that's quick, let's say I'm assuming it's a, a I'm thinking, 12 month program at this point, uh, but something you can give them a really quick win. The quick win could be um, set up your profile. I, let's say you're doing social media. So the first would be here. Here's the checklist for what needs to be on your profile. Go set that up. That would be a quick win. Uh, in the Enlightened Business Success Academy, we provide a 30 day business success jumpstart with trainings on how to get three new clients this month. We also offer fast cash infusion day training on five ways to create fast cash in your business right away. So look at what's possible for your clients. It might be around finding peace, giving them meditation, something that they can start doing right away so that they can start feeling like they're moving forward. This does not have to be as big as your big ultimate outcome of your program, but it's a quick win. Like what's the quickest achievement? Something where they can get results right away, All right? And so then of course, what does this do? This encourages them and has them it just keeps the momentum going, obviously. Your big ultimate outcomes is what happens by the end of the program. So be thinking, what are some quick wins for your premium offer? And then what are the ultimate outcomes for your premium offer? And write that down so that you can share those, um, so that you can work with them. And I'd love to hear some of those in the chat. Okay, so we're going to we're about to close out. But the final thing we need to talk about is pricing, pricing your premium offer based on the outcome and the results that your clients achieve when they work for you. This is not how long does somebody have access, right? We're not pri pricing it based on whether it's three months or six months or 12 months. That has nothing to do with the price, we're not pricing it based on how many calls they get every week it has nothing to do with that. How many calls per month? Nothing to do with that. We're not going to price it based on how many videos are included. OK, we're not going to price it based on how many modules there are. That's not what we're doing. Value based pricing is understanding that your program is so much more than the sum of its parts. It's more than a video and a template and a call. It's a life changing experience. It's a whole life changing journey that they're going on no matter what you teach. So your program is saving your clients months of time, wasted money and headaches, saving them from years of trial and error, saving them for peace of mind, saving them from stress and struggle. Get this? Save them from trying to figure it out on their own. Oh my goodness. So I'm just trying to get you to understand the value that you're putting into your program here. You're not just about making the money. You're saving them pain and heartache. And so I'd love to hear from you. What's one quick win, one ultimate outcome of your offer. And then you create your pricing based on that. And we'll have other trains where we'll go into a lot more detail about the pricing. But for now, 
that's the crux of what you want to consider as you're designing your premium offers, what limiting beliefs you've got to get rid of. And, and then now look at, okay, if I take either something new or take what you're already offering, how can I now transform this into a premium offer? And last and not least to remember, you have absolutely everything within you to create a successful enlightened business with high-end clients and with every step you take towards that success is your only option big big heart hugs lots of love bye for now